Thanks. Sorry, let's put all this up here, down here. Okay, before, before we move on, um, uh, normally this is, uh, by this time, this meeting is well attended, but unfortunately today there's a baptism. Most of our parents are not here, including our grandchildren, and there's um, some of the leaders are away on holidays, so... Um, it's, it, it's, it's made it a little difficult to to launch this week of prayer and fasting. Anyway, some things happen beyond, uh, you know, it's in the Lord's hands. But everybody will be seeing this. So during this week, and when we say the fast begins Saturday, it's to prepare ourselves. It's mainly from Monday to Thursday that we... Uh, you know, we want to take the prayer and the fasting seriously. So um, we, 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 we do this every year. Um, it's a time, on the one hand, I don't look forward to, but on the other hand, I do, because when I fast or when we fast, I get the benefit, we get the benefit. It's not that I'm fasting for someone else so much. It's that I, we, get closer to the Lord. So it's important that we have intentions, which we have. It's important we have personal intentions in this time, which is very important as well. Cluster intentions, intentions for the community. We don't want you to forget that everyone's got a list. But that's not the main reason. The main reason for fasting is for ourselves, for us to grow in the spiritual life and get closer to God. So you've been sent a, um, a sheet of what was going to be the talk today. Um, and... I think we quickly just put it up on the whole lot of it on the uh, overhead. And I'll just mention some things from it. And I, I've changed my mind. I'm not going to, I feel the Lord doesn't want me to go through all this, but to do something else. But I'm still going to mention it. 20 reasons to fast. We're going to start with number one. The main reason we fast is to humble ourselves before God. Not for, so much for the intentions, all right? And in humbling ourselves before God, we offer ourselves to the Lord to, to be open to doing his will. Because the reality is, and I know this in my own life, we, we talk big that we are obedient to God. And you, you're, you're the best, oh, you'd be up, you're the cream of the crop. Okay, you're at the best. And still, we basically, in a lot of things, we do our own thing. That's just the reality. We really are not totally submitted to God. And we need the grace of God to do that. And so when we fast and humble ourselves, we align ourselves more with God. That's just what happens. See, even yesterday, as I started to do a little bit of fasting, I was more drawn, I spent a little time drawn to the Word of God. And it wasn't boring. I was, I was actually enjoying being in it. it you know, the, my eyes were starting to be open to the Lord. So the first thing we do is we humble ourselves before God. The first thing here is, we pur it helps to purify our spirit, soul, and body before the Lord. And Daniel said in Daniel 9, 3, So I set my face unto the Lord to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting. That's what they did. And Jesus, of course, fasted for 40 days. And he did say something... Uh, can only be cast out by prayer and fasting. And he said also that 
people were not fasting when they were with him, but when the, he, he goes, that there will be fasting. He implied that. So fasting is something that it attunes us to God. We all want to get closer to God, but it's not easy. If we do it in our, want to do it in our own strength, if we're a weak-willed person like me, you'll eat very soon. It won't go very long. If you're a strong-willed person, you do it, but you might take the credit, which then becomes spiritual pride. So you don't want that either. But the best thing to do is to last the Lord, the Holy Spirit, who lives in us, to help us. So, see, it's a very beautiful thing. This is what I'm trying to convey to you. And when we do it together, it's a lot easier than trying to do it on your own. I know whenever I try to do something like this on my own, it doesn't go too well. But whenever I do it at this time, it usually goes very well because I've got all your support. You see? It's a, it becomes corporate. So don't, don't just dismiss it. It's a very, very important time and it's important for you, first of all. If you are new to it, you don't have to stop eating for four days, but you, should, you, you make sure you enter into the spirit of the fast. And one of the ways is by attending the prayers that are on. It's just, we won't watch television this week. But we'll go to pray. We might decide to go without food for one or two or three. Or some people can, you know, if they really can do it for longer, for even even three days. So that's that's up to you. There's no condemnation. There's no that you have to do this or you have to do that. But it's totally about you and the Lord. Trying to encourage you. See, the Lord is good, He's loving, He's kind. And He doesn't put things before us to punish us or to make life hard. This is actually healthy, even naturally, to do. So it is possible with God's help. Without His help, it's not. And if you do it on your own, then you'll become spiritually proud and it won't do you any good according to the scripture. So I'll leave it there. I'm not going to do the whole teaching. It's all in front of you. The scriptures may be a little bit, most of them are reasonably aligned to the, to the top, but you might find one or two of them a, a little bit harder to understand how they're aligned to the line. But nevertheless, we had to do it as in a very short time and, and um, but I think overall it's, 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 it's very good. But what I want to do, I feel the Lord take me to Isaiah. And um, I want us to go to Isaiah chapter 50 to the third servant song and talk a little bit about just about our relationship with God. Because if our relationship with God, again, is good, is going well, we can enter into his things better. If they're not, then it's harder to enter into the life of God. So in, ch in chapter 50 of verse, verse 4, it says, The Lord Yahweh has given me a disciple's tongue, so that I may know how to reply to the weary." He provides me with speech. Each morning he wakes me to hear, to listen like a disciple. The Lord Yahweh has opened my ears. So here we go. For this fast, it would be good to try to get up early as well and pray yourself. It would be, this is about Jesus. This is prophetically about Jesus. But the G, Jesus is the servant of the servants. 
we are also servants in name as a community and as persons individually. And the Lord has given us that uh, tongue to, to know how to speak to others. And each morning he wakes us up to hear what he has to say so that we're able then to speak it to others. The Lord opens our ears and hopefully that's what's happening even now. He prepares us, in other words. So this is not only for fasting but for anything. The Lord always prepares us for something. He prepares the way for us because he's kind. He wants, to, he wants to lead us in a way. We may not understand it, but he, everything that happens to us, not everything, but most things, because sometimes the devil gets in there or we've bombed it ourselves. But a lot of the times God, uh, he certainly allows things to happen, definitely. And, and sometimes those things if our heart's right, will prepare us for what's coming and for the Lord himself. So we need to be prepared. And even as we go into a fast, that's why we say we start on Saturday and today, is because we have to prepare ourselves. Okay? Even in life, people prepare. If you go for an interview, you prepare. When a couple are getting married, particularly the wife, prepares. Um, we, we, that's what life's about, preparation. We have to be open. It, it, we just can't go from event to event and not be prepared. So the first thing the Lord wants us to do, this is not just for the fasting but just in life, is to be prepared. So when we get up early, or you be late at night for some people, and prepare with God, to hear God for the next day, to prepare for the next day, to prepare for the next month, to prepare for the next week, to prepare for the next year, to prepare for the decade, God speaks to us and prepares us. He won't tell us everything, but he certainly is preparing us. So if, you, if you're not been doing that or open to that, practice it now with the fast. In the morning, in the evening, we have evening prayer together. In the morning, maybe you get up early and listen and listen and try to be open so that during the day and as we fast, you're more perceptive to people and more perceptive to speaking the word of the Lord. Secondly, he goes on to say, For my part, I made no resistance, neither did I turn away. This is, this is, this is in reference to Jesus, of course. I offered my back to those who struck me, my cheeks to those who tore at my beard. I did not cover my face against insult and spittle. Jesus did not defend himself even before Herod. Sometimes he did, sometimes he didn't. It's not easy not to defend oneself. Really, it's not, as you know. Even recently, someone saying something that not very good about me, and I just don't, it's, it's totally untrue. So, but I've just had to move on and just not worry about it. Just keep doing what God tells me to do. Because when you do follow the Lord and the Lord Himself, there will be persecution. There will be times when people will do and say things that aren't right. But that's also part of God's training for me, for us. Because in that time, I, we have to learn to forgive even deeper than before. And so I get to practice what I preach here on Sunday about forgiveness. 
and perhaps you do too, when sometimes we've been a little bit over pious and we've met someone who doesn't know the Lord and we told them to forgive if they had a problem. Well, it's probably not that easy without the Lord's help. But that's what happens. We get a chance to put into practice what we preach and what we teach. So God uses everything, but persecution will come. Jesus said, with persecution. The first thing we have to do is to hear from God. The second thing that will happen is when we're moving in God and hearing in God, there will be persecution. There will be opposition. Now, you don't look for it. You don't create it. There are some Christians who are very good at creating opposition. Uh, please don't do that. It's not helpful. I believe there's enough without me helping it along the way. So don't do that. Just be normal. Be kind. Don't be judgmental. Don't deliberately try to create it. But it will come. Sorry, I'm going slow today. Now, with, with that persecution will be forgiveness that we have to, but we have to also be persistent because one of the things with, that comes with persecution is it, it gives us, we want to give up. We want to throw the towel in. I've, I've wanted to do that a number of times here over the last 35 years. When there was persecution, I wanted to give up a few times. Fortunately, by the grace of God, not so much these days, but in the early days I did want to give up. So, again, in our own strength, we will give up. But if we ask the Holy Spirit to help us and if we have good fellowship and good brothers and sisters, we won't give up because we know we're in the Lord's army and we're in the Lord's service. And like a good soldier, we don't give up. We keep going. Okay? I know this is a slightly different style of teaching today, but I want you to understand. Okay? Thirdly, the Lord Yahweh comes to my help. So this is the servant. This is prophetic of Jesus calling on God, that God will justify me, you so that I am untouched by the insult. So too I set my face like a flint. I know, I know I shall not be shamed. Usually when we don't defend ourselves, God vindicates us. I've had that happen many a time in my life. Um, but if I defend myself, the Lord still vindicates you, but you might prolong that. If you can trust him and let him vindicate you, and he will, in time he will vindicate you, then you'll hasten his vindication. Because God always vindicates his people eventually. It might take time, if you're doing the right thing, of course. <laughs> if you're doing the wrong thing, that's different. But if you're doing the right thing and you're being obedient, God will vindicate you in his time. And that's what happened with Jesus. Jesus was totally vindicated by the Father. Totally approved by the Father. Not only at the baptism, but he was approved at the cross. He then rose from the dead and he ascended into heaven where he sits at the right hand of the Father interceding for you and I. And he not only is God and remain God always, but he's also a man and he remains man always. Jesus is still fully human and fully divine. His humanity does not stop, by the way, when he went to heaven. Okay? He's still fully human and fully divine. He's still Jesus who was born a Jew. That's the right teaching. 
So sometimes we think, oh, well, he's just now God. And, but Jesus has two natures. This is very important. I know I often talk about this. Jesus, one person, had two natures, though. <coughs> fully human and fully divine. And that is the centre of our faith, the Trinity and all that's by denying some aspect of that. And we'll move on. Then comes help. The Lord Yahweh comes to my help, so that I am untouched by the insults. So too I set my face like a flint. I know I shall not be ashamed. So help always comes from the Lord. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. The psalm says, I look upon the hills to know where my help comes from. It comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He watches my going out and my coming in. Again, it's confidence in God. The confidence comes because we are confident of him in me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Now, I said this many a time. Uh, in, in, my, in my flesh there is no good thing. But because God dwells in me, I, I, I have the power of God. I can, you know, again, occasionally I like to demonstrate. I'll pray with the two of you. Because we need to, to be more aware of who lives in us. Don't be ruled by shame and guilt. Don't let that define you. Because if you let that define you, you will not be defined by who lives in you, which is the Holy Spirit. See, in me there's the power of God. Now, it's not me. In me I've got rottenness. But because I believe who's in me in confidence, that can move on you. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Holiness is Christ in me. Again, it's got nothing to do with me and my character and personality and my makeup. In fact, sin dwells in me. But also dwells in me is God Himself. And what I do is I don't focus on the sin in me, although when I sin I have to confess it. It's not I'm not saying it we don't deal with it. But I don't focus on the shame and the guilt that it produces. I focus on the love of God. I focus on Christ in me. I focus on the Holy Spirit in me. I focus on God in me. <coughs> Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So help comes always from God. And he's right here. He's not very far. Don't have to look there. Look there. It's in here, Jesus says. The kingdom of heaven is within you. Now, any one of you can pray for anyone. I want you this year more to be praying out there for people. I'm going, I know there's not many children here today because of the baptism that's on. But I want to encourage the children. We had a four-year-old here pray with someone who was healed a month ago. I want to encourage you to pray because God's in those four-year-olds as much as he in me. Okay? So remember, you're a child of God. Okay, my vindicator is at hand. I'll have to move on here. Does anyone start proceedings against me? 
Then let us go to the court together. Who thinks he has a case against me? Let him approach me. The Lord Yahweh is coming to my help. Who will dare condemn me? They shall all go to, to pieces like a garment devoured by moths. So there's protection in the Lord. And I, you know, many of you could tell me stories about how God has protected you in your life. You could tell me incidents and places. And one day I was at uh, when my previous job before I was doing this, and uh, uh, you know, I had a word of wisdom for someone. They were going on a trip, and I told them to, when they're in a certain country to be careful. Uh, and to cut a long story short, later they came and said, thank you for that word, because had you not shared that, I may have been seriously hurt, because I prayed and I was on the alert, and an incident happened, and the Lord protected me. So how many times we, heard, we hear stories like that? How many times do we... Um, know people or even ourselves or our families it's telling you stories about God's protection. It's important to remember those incidents because if we, if we forget them, again, the devil comes with all the bad things, all the bad incidents. Let's think of when God overcame the bad incidents. Again, it's, it's again raising our perspective a little. Look, I get caught up back downwards, if you like, getting caught up with this life, with shame and guilt and condemnation and, you know, but it, 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 it's about, the, the, it's, it all starts with the love of God and finishes with the love of God. And it's very important as we come into this fast, again, it's not about, you know, um, looking morose. and It's about enjoying us getting closer to God. But also what God does is he does then usually break through and give us the desires of our heart if we do it in the right spirit. And that's why we do have these intentions as well. And we, we ask you to remember the intentions of the community. Uh, we're having uh, conferences here this year, different groups are renting this place out. And we'd like to extend at least this part here. But the council won't let us at the moment. It would give us probably 100, 150 extra seats. We need your prayers. It won't happen. Um, and it will be... a, a a fairly cheap way to, to do things for the time being before we can do the bigger things, which we, we, don't, we can't do at the moment. So, again, own. Own being part here. Don't just be a spectator and a passenger. Own it as part of your prayer because you're benefiting now and we want you to benefit even more and others who will come later and be blessed like others have gone before us and we're here because of them. So to finish off, the last thing that the servant talks about here is that He's going to follow God. The verse 10 talks about following the Lord. Let anyone who fears the Lord among you listen to the voice of his servant. Whoever walks in darkness and has no light shining for him, let him trust in the name of the Lord. Let him lean on his God. So finally, finally, God wants us to be his followers and to lean on him. And again, if we don't have, um, you see, in the modern sort of charismatic Pentecostal church, we, we don't have a lot of time um, for, not that 
certainly um, uh, the charismatic Pentecostal movement has helped rediscover fasting, by the way. But generally with us, we don't have a time to sit back and to really meditate on the Lord. And this is why we did the, the program last year. To finish off, and then we're just going to, we might finish a bit early today. To finish off, we've got to really make that decision. This is where I start to follow Jesus again. Remember the song, I follow Jesus, the, the world behind me, the cross before me. We've got to do that again because we do, we do pick up a lot of baggage, okay, along the way. And we, we forget the simple things of Christ again. Remember, it's all started with Christ and the Holy Spirit, and the Father, and it's got to finish with him. So we, we accumulate, we get sophisticated. You know, there was a revival called the Welsh Revival. Have you not heard about that? It's basically in the Protestant church because of all the people there are Protestants. But, you know, one of the things that killed it was people got contemptuous of what was going on. They took things for granted. When, at the beginning of it, when someone was healed, people were really enthusiastic. A couple of years down the track, when someone was healed, um, you know, so on type of thing. That was what happened. That's what happens with human beings. And that, in a sense, happens to me and to you. When we first come to the Lord, we're very excited. Now, I know people can jump the gun and claim a here healing and before it's actually happened, uh, um, you know, and, but it's important that we don't lose our simplicity and don't lose prophecy. And again, things have to be discerned. But again, to take the things of God seriously and not to overly sophisticate them. Not to, we, and all the scriptures uh, yes, they need to be read intelligently, like Paul said. That scripture that we quoted can be quoted to batter people with. You submit to me. If it's not taken in context of the whole chapter. So things have to be taken in context. But on the other hand, if we don't read scripture as it is to speak to me, then we'll get so sophisticated, we won't believe anything of it. Because there's always a but and something, you know, we've got to take it fairly seriously and literally without taking it out of context. That's very important. There's, there's two big errors in Scripture. Taking the Word of God, a verse, and taking it out of context, that's how sex start and groups start who go off there. They take the Word of God, they learn it, and then they take one verse and out of context. And that verse that we read could be one of them. Or you go the other way, where you just, you know, everything is, there's a reason, and yes, it was written for that and that, but I don't take any of it personally, and I don't allow any of the Word of God to change me. Because, see, it's the Word of God that's got to change us. So how do you become holy? Not by trying to keep the Ten Commandments, by the way. That was, that was um, in the Old Covenant. Now, the Ten Commandments are very important and our whole society used to be based on them. And I wish we even could do here teachings on them, particularly on the First Commandment about the occult and about having strange gods. But we as Christians are not supposed to try and keep the Ten Commandments. Certainly if we try to on our own, you're going to fall. But what, what we're supposed to do is again concentrate on God in us and then read the Word of God 
particularly the new commandments, which are the Beatitudes, and ask the Holy Spirit for the Holy Spirit live, for us to live the Beatitudes. We we do have to outwork our righteousness. We do have to produce fruit, but it's not by trying to keep the commandments of old one by one, but it's by living the life in God, knowing that the New Testament Ten Commandments are the Beatitudes and living our life from that and allowing the Word of God to speak to us and to change us. That's how it's done. Very simple. Very simple.